What's up, YouTube? For today's video, we're with full Pokemon Tree Team. Five years ago, I did a Pokemon Tree Team, and I thought, you know what? It's time to do another one, and let's revamp it with a couple of different members, right? It actually kind of makes me a little bit sad that Tropius isn't in the game, so I really, really like that Pokemon. If you do want to check me out on Twitch, people, this is where I do all my live streams for my Pokemon theme teams, Pokemon sweeps, and all other forms of salty entertainment. Now, I didn't upload yesterday, so I'm going to be spoiling you people with three battles. I hope you enjoy those battles. They were very, very entertaining. The first battle here we have is against uh, Cotmycin, and this was another troll team. It pretty much always is. Now, the first Pokemon we got here is Swirlix, right? A little cotton candy. Now, I've got Sudowoodoo as the first Pokemon tree on my team. Now, this set is all based around a special Sudowoodoo, plus I've got Mimic on there too. So, we've got Mimic, Rock Polish, Meteor Beam, and Earth Power. I've got the Power Herb as the item here too. So, what I want to do, right, is I want to go for Rock Polish, and then I want to see if I can Mimic a move. If I can't Mimic a move, I can then go for Meteor Beam. Now, the opposing Swirlix is going to go for a Car Mine. I'm like, wait, Wait a second, I can go for Mimic, and then I can actually learn Carmine, and then use Carmine Sudo Woodo only on People Large Channel, right? And then I'll be able to fire off a Meteor Beam, possibly, right? Now, the Swirlix is going to go for a uh, Carmine here again, so it's got a couple of Carmines up there, and I'm going to be able to outspeed it, which is very good. Now, I won't be able to take this out in one shot with one Meteor Beam, so I'm going to need a couple of my own Carmines to at least try and do a heavy damage to this thing or not. I don't really know how bulky it is or if it's just like a pure sweeping set. I'm not sure at this stage, right? I'm going to probably assume that it has Everlight, right? So we got the Flamethrower coming from the Swirlix there. I'm guessing they did that to assume if I was a, like a physical type, not a special type. And now I'm going to be using Carmine. So they might be able to guess that I'm running a special set here, right? It was just lucky that they had Carmine for me to be able to make use, right? Now here comes the Draining Kiss here. It's going to kiss my wood and it's a critical hit almost taking me out there, man. That was close right there. So what I'm going to do right now, I've got to go for Meteor Beam here. I thought I had a little bit more time to go for some more car mines, but I'm not going to be able to do that, right? So I've got to attack this, and I've got to try and get as much damage off as possible. I was praying this didn't miss either, because Meteor Beam always misses when I really need to hit, right? Uh, so find that big beam off against the Swirlix, and Swirlix is going to be able to tank that one. Plus, it's going to be eating a berry there with the Citrus Berry, and it's going to have the ability Unburdened. So that's going to double its speed. So it's going to be speedy, and it's going to be hitting reasonably hard, right? And it's going to be kissing me, right? It's going to be kissing all my trees. So bye-bye, Sword of Woodoo. That was unfortunate. And I've got to swap in another Pokemon to take this out. Now, I thought Snorlax would be pretty good on this scene, right? Because G-Max Snorlax has a tree on top of it. And this is a Rest Recycle Double-Edged Shadow Ball set with Staff Berry. So it's a little bit similar to the Snorlax sweep I did recently, but instead of having the Salic Berry, it's got Staff Berry right. Now, Staff Berry, when consumed, raises a random stat by two stages. So it's pretty good if you get the right one, but it's all based on luck, right? So I thought I might be able to get that against this Snorlax. So uh, Snorlax is able to tank these moves really, really easily. The EVs I got on this Snorlax at the moment are Max Health and Max Pack Adam and Nature. So it hits reasonably hard. Now I've got the Gluttony as the ability and I've got Double Edge and Shadow Ball as the attack. So I thought I'd give it a uh, physical, uh, normal type move and a special sh uh, Shadow Ball so I can get Ghost in case I get like some special attack rises, right? Also Double Edge doing damage here actually puts it in range of easier of Gluttony, right? Now this Swirlix is kind of stalling me out here with the Draining Kiss damage. However, um, I'm actually doing a reasonable amount of damage to it too, even with its uh, Cotton Guard up there, right? So I'm getting pretty close here to putting myself into the uh, range of Gluttony and my Staff Berry, and finally Snorlax is going to chomp down on that Berry, right? So I get an attack boost, like a plus two in attack right off the bat there, so like, it's really good. Let's go for the... Uh, G-Max Snorlax, and hopefully I'll be able to get a berry here with this G-Max Replenish. Now, if you don't know, that's a 50% chance, so it's a pretty good chance of getting another berry. The cool thing about Staff Berry is it could be any random stat, though. But uh, you should, normally you want to get a stat that benefits you, so I'm hoping I don't get something like, well, like speed or maybe defense or special defense, but I'd rather get like an offensive stat at this point, right? So here comes the Draining Kiss. Now, Swirlix is going to get a fair bit of its health back there. And I'm actually going to go for G-Max Replenish, hoping I can take it out this turn or like the next one, right? So Swirlix is going to go down here, which is good. I got a critical hit, but I didn't get a berry there. So that was uh, 
very disappointing. However, at least we took a Swirlix out in Pokemon, people. There is that. Next Pokemon to come in here is the Boofler. It's like, okay, I might as well just go for, uh, you know, G-Max Replenish again. Boofler's going to go for a Mud Slap here, dropping my Actually. Now, that's not really going to matter too much in G-Max. If it's outside of G-Max, it could matter, right? So, Bufflet is going to manage to live that one, and it's going to have uh, leftovers as its item, too. So, that's pretty much... Every single turn of G-Max used up here, if I do, uh, you know, get this berry off, uh, don't get this berry off on the last uh, Snorlax uh, G-Max replenish run. Now, Bubble is going to go to sleep there. It's going to become very, very healthy and get all of its health back, right? Praying I can get some sort of attack stat here on the boot front, right? Hits it very hard, and I take it out. I was like, man, that was really, really good. Getting a Staff Berry there as well. Finally, that was uh, the, the last uh, G-Max replenish. And I get another attack boost by two. So I've got plus four in attack right now. Let's pop it off. So that's two Pokemon down. Now, the next Pokemon here is Altaria. Now, the fun thing about this set, right, I've actually got Recycle on it too. So on the G-Max, right, I can make use of the berry. And then when I'm outside of the uh, G-Max and I've used up my berry already, I can make use of Recycle too. So this is a physical Altaria. Dragon Claw is not going to do a lot of damage here. I'm going to go for Recycle again, right? which is fine. Now, this does have rest, but the only thing about using rest is I will be asleep for two turns. So I am vulnerable to getting actually set up on here at the moment, and I don't really want to get set up on, so I'm just going to go for a double edge and take out the Altaria, just in case, because if I get set up on, I'm probably going to get destroyed. So Altaria is going to go down, but I'm going to go down to the recall from double edge there. So that's the Staff Berry Snorlax. If you want to try out something really fun, Try that set out right. Next Pokemon we got here is the Wooloo. Now, this was a really, really annoying matchup because this caused a lot more trouble than it was worth, right? So, this Trevor right is a special set. I can see that it's got Everlight with a Frisk. And this is a uh, Max Elf, Max Special Tech, Modest Nature. I can't use Shadow Ball because it's normal type. I've got Lee Storm tr and Trick with the Choice Specs. And I've also got Focus Blast as well. So I go for Focus Blast, right? That'll do a lot of damage. I should take it out. Uh, Wooloo's going to go for Agility here, boosting its speed. It wasn't really much of a surprise that I get I, you know, outsped there, right? Now, it's going to have Bulletproof, so my, my Focus Miss isn't going to work. I can't use Shadow Ball. And I mean, I could go for Trick there, but obviously I'm locked into a move already, so i got to swap. So now we're going to go into a Bomber Snow here. Now, this is an interesting set. It's all based around weather. Now, whether or not, pardon the pun, if I could take this out in one shot was going to be another thing, right? I wanted to see what move this was actually going to do. So it's gone for agility twice. So it's going to be very, very speedy. I'm thinking, what are they going to make use of if agility that can hit my Abominus over some decent damage, right? I've got Sheer Cold on this set, and I've also got Weather Ball, and I've also got Power Herb, Solar Beam, and Rain Dance, right? So it does no damage there What to me whatsoever. So I thought, okay, they're probably going to swap here. There's not going to be a, like a lot of damage here. Let's just go for the Weather Ball again. And they went for a rest. I'm like, oh my god. Goodness, they stayed in. So now, right, when I went for Weather Ball, since Bulletproof blocks uh, that ball moves, right, it's going to fail. So this, this thing's countering me hard at the moment. So the only moves I can really do to this at the moment is Solar Beam. Oh, it started raining at the moment, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear that in the background, but it's, it's, it's kind of loud, so... I do apologize for that. So this is a Snor, uh, Snorwoolu, and it flinched me first go. This is going to be really, really mean, right? So... Uh, the thing about this is the agility is able to outspeed me. So it has a chance of uh, obviously flinching me. And it's doing like a, only a little bit of damage there. So I thought my best play here would be to go for Sheer Cold, right? Sheer Cold should hit. I've got 8 PP. It's not doing a lot of damage right now. Now is going to go for the Electro Ball here. And I'm starting to think, okay, well, if I don't do any damage to Wulu, it won't be able to go to sleep. And it won't be able to go for Snore and flinch me, right? So... That's going to be its last, uh, you know, sort of move that it's going to go for, right? And it's going to be going back to sleep. So that's all good. And I can just keep going for sheer cold white sleep and hopefully land uh, just one. I only need one attack to take out the Wooloo, right? So I'm going to miss here. I think that's the third miss here. And here comes another snore from Wooloo, right? It's not doing a lot of damage. It's still probably about four to five PKO away, right? Now the uh, sheer cold is going to miss again on the Wooloo. Wooloo is still going to be sleeping here. And it's going to go for yet another snore here. But that is the last turn Wooloo can actually use its snore. Like, it won't be able to go to sleep again, right? So now Wooloo is going to wake up and it's going to use Electrol. Things are starting to get a little bit desperate here because I've used, like, Sheer Cold a lot of times here. That was the sixth or seventh miss there. Yeah, it was the seventh miss in a row. I've missed it seven times. So I'm going to go for my final Sheer Cold here. I have to land this turn, otherwise I'm going to go down to a Disrespect Electro Bowl. And I missed 
all eight sheer colds in a row. There you go, people. Only on Pimp Night Channel. I've been really unlucky lately with one-hit KO moves. I know they don't have amazing accuracy, but usually you'd hit one. So I think I might have to redeem myself and do a new one-hit KO moves team. What do you reckon? If you want to see a new one-hit KO moves team, leave a comment below. It's been a couple of years since I've done one. All right. Next Pokemon here is Executor. Had to include this. I included Executor and Executor LOL. They're both... You know, pretty cool tree bug one, right? Now, they're going to go for another agility. Yeah, I'm going to go for the Trick Room. So, their Electro Ball will be hitting me, like, really, really hard. Well, as hard as it possibly could be for a, you know, a Wulu and an Executor matchup, right? So, I've got a Citrus Berry, uh, Wood Hammer, Dragon Hammer set with Max Health and Max Attack, Brave Nature, Zero IVs. So, here comes the Electro Ball. It's going to obviously do no damage at all because I resist that very heavily. And now, I can go for two Wood Hammers and that's going to be enough to take out the Wulu there. So that was a lot quicker than the poor Obama Snow. Maybe Obama Snow can land a sheer cold in the next battle or two, right? Next Pokemon to come in is the Wimscott. I don't have a lot to hit this with outside of Woodhammer. Now it's going to go for Misty Terrain. So things are getting a little bit misty there. I can't quite see you guys there, but can you see me? I'm waving to you, all right? Now, I can go for Woodhammer. I reckon it'll be about a two to three hit KO, right? Judging on what EV spread this is going to be. And it's about, I'd say around maybe even a 3 to 4 there. So take a little bit of nasty recall. Now, when the Missy Train is up on the field and you use Nature Power, it'll turn into Moon Blast. And Executor is going to be the first tree on the moon. Can you imagine Executor on the moon, right? It's, it's got all of its little coconut heads. They've all got little space helmets on. So we got three minutes left on this battle. I'm going to go into Tristan Trevenant, and I've got to take this thing out right. Now, this time, I can finally go for Shadow Ball, right, which is good. I'm going to see that it's got Life Orb, which I already knew anyway, so that was no surprise. Uh, here comes the Hurricane. Hurricane hit me really hard. It's a good thing I was running bulky on this set. Otherwise, I would have got one shot of them. So uh, we're going to fire off that Choice Spec Shadow Ball at the Whimscott, and that is going to be enough to take it out. So there's one more Pokemon left, right? And I've also got one more Pokemon, too. The last Pokemon is, it's Ponyta. I was like, oh no. You know what's going to happen. You know what is coming. Now, Ponyta is going to go for a Calm Mind there. It's going to be a special sweeper, or it's just going to be bulky. I'm not really sure. At this stage, I was locked into the Shadow Balls. I, I have to go for it here, right? Uh, so, throwing that Shadow Ball off against the uh, the Ponyta, it does pretty good damage. It's definitely an Everlighted set. And now it's going to go for Stored Power. It got a boost from the Cart Mine, and that is enough to take out Tristan Trevor. And I was close, people. I was very, very close there to taking it out. I've got one more Pokemon left. This is a really interesting Executor set. I have used this one before, and we're into the last minute of the battle. This is a Roat Berry Executor with Trick Room, my favorite healing move, Infestation, and Giga Drain, right? So Horn Drill is going to miss. I knew that I have Horn Drill, so I went for the Infestation here, right? I need to get some form of damage here on the Ponyta. I can go for a Giga Drain, like, afterwards and, you know, hopefully take it out, right? Now, we got 30 seconds left of the battle. Ponyta is going to miss its second Horn Drill, and I can go for a Giga Drain here, and that is enough to take out the little Pony. I was very, very close to getting hit by a Horn Drill there. I would have been salty because I miss all eight of my sheer cards, right? And for that Ponyta to cheekily come on the field and land one horn drill against me, man, I would have been salty. Thank you for the battle cop, my said. Everyone watching this video right now, just forget what happened with that Wooloo, all right? It never happened. A bomb and soul Wooloo matchup, it never occurred in your life, all right? When when you wake up tomorrow, you'll forget it completely. Okay, so the next battle here, this one's against Sand, and we got another booty team. This is a Nido Queen set. And it's a, uh, a very, very trolling set, I can tell you that. Now, I've got this Suda Wudu. Um, this set was uh, this was really quite hard to use because not only does it have bad special attack, it just had really, really bad luck. Oh, you get to see anyway. So go for that Rock Pod set. Nita Queen's going to go for Toxic Spikes. So I was like, wow, I can go for Mimic and I can get Toxic Spikes on Suda Wudu Hacker Exposed, right? So now the Nita Queen is going to go for a Dragon Tail, right? I'm going to say this right real quick, though. I'll probably call Nita Queen Nita King. So I'm going to pre roast myself right there. See you guys, guys. So in comes the Snorlax, right? I'm going to get dragged out by that Nita Queen. Imagine Nita Queen dragging you out of bed, right? Like just drags you out. And we got this Snorlax taking a little bit of our stealth rocks damage there. And of course, uh, it's poison from the Toxic Spice. Uh, now we got the um, Nita Queen using stealth rocks there. Oh, I took, sorry, I took prior damage. Uh, from the uh, Toxic Spice, not the other way around there, right? So we got uh, double edge damage on uh, the Nidder Queen there, and it's got red card as the item, so I'm going to get flung out of the battle again. Like, my team is just getting constantly exposed, right? Next Pokemon is my Executor coming in here, right? So, 
Well, I could go for a Dragon Hammer, but I could go for a Trick Room here too. Maybe it's got another move than Dragon Tail and they won't use that. Like, I know it's a bit of a risky play, but I want to get the Trick Room up so I can go first right with some of my uh, other Pokemon. However, they're going to go for a, uh, a Dragon Tail again, and Executor is going to go out of this battle. Next Pokemon to come in is Sudowoodoo again. So like, okay. Let's go for a Meteor Beam here. Or no, actually, you know what? Let's go for an Earth Sprout. It's super effective. I don't know if it's going to take it out because it's special attack is hot smoking trash, but let's give it a go, right? So I take like 69 million damage there from all the entry hazards. Here comes a Poison Tower. It's like, okay, that didn't do a lot of damage to me, right? Uh, Earth Power should do but probably a 1 to 2 KO from here. It doesn't quite take it out and it lives on one health. So it's like, okay. My opponent is definitely going to go for Poison Tail again, so let's go for Rock Polish here. Yeah, that way, I can get the uh, you know, Meteor Beam, um, you know, obviously KO there. My opponent did not go for a Poison Tail and decided to go for another Dragon Tail. You wouldn't read about it. So, Swidowoodo is going to be automatically swapped out. Man, I'm getting swapped out. It's like, like my Pokemon are swapping more than my underpants at this stage. So, Executor, right, is going to come back in, take some more scummy damage, right? I'm going to eat a berry in the cloud. So, it's, it's actually okay right now. Actually, it's not okay, but it's better than it was before. So, I can attack this Nidoqueen. It doesn't matter what I do. And you can bet your ass this Nidoqueen has poison point, right? It just wants to poison and toxic my whole deck. Uh, so, smacking that booty there, and it's going to go down. Finally, that Nidoqueen took so long. I reckon that Nidoqueen, just looking at the timeline at the moment in my editing program, that took a quarter of this battle to take that thing out. Next Pokemon here is the tail out. It's, it's trying to snipe my booty there. I mean, the Executor's booty is pretty thick, though. Here comes the Scale Shot. So that's going to boost the speed off the Intel there, right? And take out my Executor that was weakened on um, just a little bit of health, right? Um, that was the second crit, though. I think it would have needed maybe a third to take me out, judging on the first damage there. I could be wrong, but it looked like I could probably live one more. It would have hit three hits anyway, let's be real. Next point got to come in here is Snorlax. It's like, okay, it's time to go for the G-Max Snorlax. And maybe, I, you know, I should be able to get a Gluttony here easy, right? I get the Gluttony, Star Fairy will activate, and then I'll go for my G-Max move, because obviously I'm going to get out sped, and then I'll get another roll of the dice at the Star Fairy. That'll be like a 50% chance, but it's a good chance of it happening. So potentially I could get two Star Fairy activations here, and I may even get an attack boost or something like that, right? So while uh, Digivolving into the Snorlax here right now, and it's going to go for a Scale Shot. Scale Shot misses out of all the times I wanted it to miss. So... I got some good damage on there with Snorlax, right? And Booty Sniper got one shot, but I didn't get any berry activations whatsoever, man. I was, it was, it was just dry. There was no action at all. I was getting more action in like grade two. Anyway, so the next spot I'm gonna come in is a Cinderace, right? Now, Booty Kicker is probably gonna kick my booty. I've gotta be real. Mega Kick is going to be its uh, choice to move there. Libero is gonna turn it into a normal type, right? Man, Snorlax got kicked. He got kicked in the tree. And now, finally, finally, the Star Fairy is going to activate, giving me a uh, attack boost. It's like, wow. No way. I got another attack boost. So Snorlax just got pretty uh, lucky with the attack boost there. So Booty Kicker is going to go down in one shot there. And Snorlax has really got me back into this game. Like, we'll just forget about... Actually, you know what? Forget about what happened in the first... Wait, the first battle never happened with Wooloo. This battle, just forget about the uh, Nidoqueen and Sudowoodo matchup, all right? Just... just just wipe that from your memory. Anyway, so in comes Ludicolo there. It's going to go for a little tea to dance, and it's going to be confusing me, right? I need to get around this scummy confusion, because if I don't, it's going to do a lot of damage. However, I do. And Ludicolo isn't going to be doing any more dancing after that. However, I also get a Star Fairy at the same time, which is great. That was the first, uh, you know, uh, berry that I got, right? So I got a Defense Rise now. So, okay, that's not a bad, uh, you know, uh, activation to get there. So that's going to give me a plus two in Defense. I actually did an Applin sweep. Uh, that was one of my very, very first sweeps there uh, when X and Y came out. Sorry, X and Y, Sword and Shield. What the fuck? X and Y. <laughs> Roast me. Uh, Sword and Shield came out, right? I used uh, st uh, the, ri the Staff Bear with Ripen, and then you could get like plus fours. It was absolutely wild. Like, check that sweep out if you want to have a cool strategy, right? So in comes uh, Giggy Booters, or Giga Booters, right? And Giga Boot is it is it Giga Booters or Giggy Booty? I'm not sure. Anyway, its booty is big and it's thick, right? Look at that. Look at that big booty. You know you want one like that. So I need Giga Booty. That's it. That's a good nickname, by the way. I will, I will admit. So now Snorlax, right, obviously is going to get out of spin. Uh, Reggie, Reggie Booty or Giga Booty is going to go for a max uh, still right? That's going to do a um, plus one in defense, right? So... 
That wasn't a bad play there because that will make them a lot more bulky and Snorlax won't hit them as hard, right? So Double Edge still does pretty good damage there. I'm going to take some uh, damage from the recoil and, of course, from the uh, Toxic Spikes too there. Now, Regigigas or Giga Booty as a uh, leftovers as his item and Snorlax is going to faint. But Snorlax really got me into the game, like back into that game after that Nino Queen. That Nino King troll me. Wait, we, we, we weren't talking about Nino Queen. I mean, I mean that, um... That beautiful start from the Snorlax, right? And somehow my other Pokemon got poisoned and stuff, right? Okay, so go for the Meteor Bear here on Suda Wudu. It's about time I did something with this poor Pokemon. I'm going to fire that laser off there, and I'm going to get my uh, plus one in special attack against the uh, Regigigas. It was good that I was actually able to live the entry hazard and then get at least one attack off, right? Because it did reasonable damage to, uh, you know, Dynamax Regigigas. So Regigigas going to be firing that, uh, those uh, little, uh, little spikes there out of its... Um, booty and Sudowoodoo is going to go down. So bye bye Sudowoodoo. It's had a rough this battle. It really has had a rough. So I've got three Pokemon left. I've got my other Executor. And I was thinking that might be good to swap in against this thing. Or maybe I should leave it to the end. I was like, nah, let's leave it to the end. What I want to do here, right, is go for a trick and give the Regigigas a choice spec. And I'll actually get a Leftovers instead. So that won't be a bad matchup. You know what I mean? Like an item swapper. So I can see it's got leftovers. I know you never knew that one. So go, <laughs> go for the trick here. And I'm going to be uh, giving it a choice specs. So that way, if let's say that um, its ability uh, slow start was, um, it got its act together, right? Well, even if it gets its act together, it's going to lock itself into using one move. So that may give me a slight advantage, right? I could have gone for focus miss, right? But we all know it would have missed at this point in time. So that's why I didn't go for it. Now, I do have a option here, too, because Regigigas has got one more turn, I believe, before it gets its act together. And this is the one turn I've got to do some form of damage to it. Now, I didn't go for Focus Miss. I decided to go for a Leaf Storm here. I was hoping that'll be enough damage to take it out. And it was. Giga Booty is going to go down. Uh, Trevenant is going to take a harsh special attack uh, drop there. And without its choice specs, it's doing no damage whatsoever. So there's one more Pokemon left here. There's no Dynamax left there, which is very, very good. Plus, I've still got two other Pokemon in the back here, right? Now, the next Pokemon and the last Pokemon is Whip Your Booty, which is the Grim Snail. Now, I know why it's called this for. You'll get to find out very, very soon. Uh, here we go. Actually, you get to find out now. Look at those. They're like whips. Okay, so Trevor is going to go down there. P PG battle, by the way. And uh, that's going to take me out in one shot. Not much I could do there. Trevor did it work earlier on, right? Now, the next spot got to come in is Obama, so I've got to redeem this, right? Um, last battle, actually, no, it, it did well last battle. So I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for the uh, sheer, uh, sheer cold here, and it's going to land just exactly, like, it's going to land eight times in a row, just like last battle, all right? Now, Grimstar's going to go for a swag here, all right? And that's going to give me a plus two in attack, which is a shame I'm not running any uh, physical moves. That could have benefited me. I was a little bit worried I might hit myself in confusion, though, which would hurt, you know. And uh, we're going to go for an attacking move there, and I hit myself. I was like, man, this is bad. You know what I mean? Because I hit myself, and I'm going to take entry hazard damage, a bit like from before, and now I'm going to take poison damage. Here comes the second spirit break from the Grim Style. A bomber so lived on 69 health there, which is great. I snap out of confusion, and sheer cold misses. Man, that was like the perfect moment in my life to land a sheer cold. Like, that would have been the greatest sheer cold land ever. Come on, Obama. So, man. So, I've got one more Pokemon left in this battle, right? i got to perform right now. I've got Executor. So, this is the Scummy Roa Berry set. And I don't know, man. It's not going to work very good here because this is all based on versing special moves, not physical moves. So my uh, Whip Your Boot is going to whip my Executor into shape there. Doing some pretty good damage to it, right? Uh, the only play I can really go for here is Giga Drain, right? Since I have only got, like, I've got all my investment in max health, and I've also got it in max defense, right? So I'm not doing as much damage as Executor could, right, if it was max special attack. So the Grim Style is going to be able to outspeed me next turn, and it's going to be able to whip Executor's Coconuts. And that's pretty much it for the second battle. Um, I hope you enjoy this one, and just just pretend that Nino Queen bit didn't happen at the start, right? There's a lot of the look. There's a lot of parts about this video you gotta forget, right? You just gotta have a nice peaceful sleep tonight and forget about the start of the first battle, which didn't happen, and the start of the second wait, the start of the second battle, this didn't happen, and of course the the, the Wooloo part in the first battle that didn't happen. Okay, let's get on to the third and final battle here, people. Hopefully, I don't get salty in this one. This one is against Hunt Down, and I think we got another troll team here, man. Everyone wants to troll me today. First Pokemon we got is Lucario. Now, this wasn't what you call the greatest matchup in the history of Pokemon, right? 
So on this set, as you know, I've got Sheer Cold. I was desperate to land a Sheer Cold here. I was like, let's go for Sheer Cold here on the Lakaru. Lakaru is going to have Steel Beam. I oh, wow. This is going to do a lot. A bomber, so he's going to get dropped in one shot there. So I thought, well, I might be able to send in one of my other Pokemon here. It may not go for Steel Beam, but it could end up really, really bad, right? So Lakaru is going to eat its Citrus Berry and get some of its health back. Now, the next Pokemon I got here is the Sudawood to swap in. Sudawood has got Sturdy, and it is Hailing, right? So, if it does go for a Steel Beam, it's going to take me out with that in the Hail. But I thought it may have a Fighting-type move, too. And I thought I was actually going to use Rain Dance more, so I took the risk, right? So, here comes a Steel Beam. I'm going to live a one health. I thought and hoped the Lakara would go for a Fighting-type move there instead of, like, expending all that health, right? So I went for the Rock Polish here, and I'm going to I'm gonna faint to it, basically. It's uh, just a Salt Flake, right? So bye-bye, Soto Wudu. Uh, oh, man, I, I thought that it would use, like, Aura Sphere or something like that instead of uh, you know, using up uh, Steel Beam, right? But considering it's, like, weak to both moves. But bye-bye, Soto Wudu. He was, he was real, man. Next Pokemon here is Executor. Now, Lakara is going to go for another Steel. Is Steel Beam a Tony move? Is this... I was going to say, it's this Choice Spec Steel Beam, but it had, uh, you know, Citrus Berry. I, I gotta say, it's probably just had Steel Beam as his only move for a troll set. So Lakari takes itself out, only on Pimrush Shadow, and I'm gonna be eating a berry right in those uh, salty clouds. So I need to get Trick Room up here. I gotta get it up fast, right? So getting Trick Room up real fast, obviously, and now I can start to go for Wood Hammer, right? Wood Hammer will hit hard, and it'll hit fast under Trick Room, and right, if Harvest kicks in, right, I can get some health back. Now, in comes Noctowl. Actually, a couple of days ago, we seen a Noctowl. Like, it's, it's not often you see Noctowl crop up so much. It's also a shiny one, too. Ash Ketchum probably released a couple. Now, here comes the Hive Voice. I'm going to block that with the Protect. Now, Protect is just basically there to get the Harvest and Citrus Spray if it doesn't kick in right away, right? It's got a 50% chance. So Harvest Ability is going to kick in there. I'm going to eat another berry. And Executor is going to have some more health, which is very good. Now, I can go for a Dragon Hammer here. Whether it's going to be a one-shot, I don't know. It's going to do a lot of damage, though. I know that for sure, right? And in comes the uh, Purloin here. So, okay, Purloin. Well, that'll take a lot of damage from Dragon Hammer. It may even take it out, right? So, smacking that puss. I mean, that uh, life part there. Uh, did I call that Purloin? I mean, life part. And it's going to be living there on a little bit of help. And it's going to get a Leechy Berry there, right? Which is unfortunate. And the hail's going to end. I was like, man... This Ceres, now it's going to go for Endure, so it's going to stall another turn of my Trick Room out. So, like, this is, this is just mean, right? So, smacking that Life Heart again there. I didn't say that before. And it's going to be living on one health. However, I do get another Harvest, so it's not all that bad. Now, Life Heart's going to go for a Sucker Punch here. Executor is going to live on 31 health and eat another berry. So, that's very, very good. I was able to attack that plus one. Uh, you know, Sucker Punch there, which is nice. So, bye-bye, Lipard. You, you did a pretty good job there. You really pressured the Executor. Like, Executor Harvest at Citrus Berry is very, very good. Like, I, I like using it with a uh, Wood Hammer because you can keep getting the Berry activation over and over again. It's pretty nice. So, in comes another Persian. Uh, another, um... On another Persian. In comes another cat. I almost said something else said. And I'm going to block that fake out, which is good there. So that's some extra damage from them they can't get on me. Here comes a U turn. Executor lives on 69 health again there. And Persian is going to swap out. Now, the Pokemon to come in here is going to be the uh, Noctowl. So, like, okay, they, they, they swapped the Noctowl out before. Why would they be swapping it in? Hmm. This is curious, right? Maybe they're going to Dynamax the Shiny Noctowl to live the attack. That's. Or they're just going to eat the damage. I'm not really sure. So speaking of eating, I'm going to be eating another citrus berry here. Holy man, I've eaten like three or four berries right now. And uh, we got the knockdown going for Dynamax. Like, ah, oh, okay, right. So assuming this is a special knockdown, they use Hyper Voice already. So I'm going to have to assume they've got Hurricane on the set. Probably Heat Wave. And uh, something like that, right? I miss the I miss the Synchronize knockdown. I used to use that all the time. It's really, really like quite a fun set, right? Like, Synchronize is a really cool move based on your typing, if you don't know. If you, if you want to see the move Synchronize in action, watch my Epic Umbreon sweep. Man, that's an amazing... That's the best Pokemon sweep ever. So we got the uh, Knockdown going for a Max Airstream. Never saw that one coming. And Executor is going to be going down, right? It, it, it did some really good damage there. I'm happy with that. I'm still happy with that set. Now I went there. 
that's probably one of the better sets on my team to be uh when i look at my uh team honestly next pokemon here is the snorlax now i'm gonna go for double edge i'm not playing any games and Noctowl actually lives that one. Now, what I want to happen, right, I want to be able to outspeed Noct uh, Noctowl, do some damage from Double Edge, and then I want it to attack me to get me into gluttony range to eat my Staff Berry, which is exactly what happened, which is very good. Now, it's going to be dropping my speed, right, which is fine. That's not too bad because Trick Room is uh, up at the moment. And I'm going to get a speed boost. So I got, I, like, I lost a speed, and then I got plus two in speed. So essentially, I got plus one in speed at the moment. So it wasn't really ideal for Snorlax, right? Now this was max health and sorry, this was this was max health and max special attack, and then I gave it. I think I gave it. I I, I don't know if I gave it quite. I'm pretty sure I boosted it to, to a special attack, but didn't lower its attack. Like I gave it some. Uh, maybe I dropped one of the defenses or something like that. I can't quite remember. I'm gonna go for our speed and knocked out there. Go for the G Max replenish and knocked out is gonna go down. So that's good. Getting rid of the Dynamax knocked out. Very very good. Most of the time, I pretty much always uh, G-Max and Snorlax, right? To keep him with the theme deck. Next Pokemon is Lunatone, right? I'm going to go for a G-Max Replenish here, basically to try and get another berry. Then I thought, I'll go for uh, the Shadow Ball after. So I get a berry activation, which is uh, very good there. And we're going to see what I get with this Staff Berry, right? So getting a plus two right there. In speed, I got a plus three in speed. You wouldn't read about it. So now Lunatone, right, it's going to go for a Cosmic Power. It's going to make it quite bulky and quite thick, yeah? So I'm thinking, right, uh, will I be able to take this out in one shot? I don't think so. Like, Snorlax's special attack isn't really anything great, right? Now, due to all the plus, like, the, like the double plus in speed, I was actually able to outspeed the Lunatone there, which is really, really funny. So I had spent my opponent in the Trick Room, and then since I got the plus uh, four in speed, I was actually able to outspeed them outside the Trick Room, which is really, really funny right there. Okay, so we got a Meteor Beam Lunatone. It's going to be firing off its uh, beam real quick there with a the power herb. Now, Snorlax is going to be able to tank this one very nicely in G-Max, right? It's Snorlax, you know what I mean? And uh, it's going to be able to possibly do some form of damage to it, maybe with Shadow Ball, right? But before that, I was like, let's go for a cycle. I want to see what berry I can get, right? Hopefully, I can get something like... I don't know, like a special defensive barrier there. And I get a defensive barrier. It's like, oh, I got defense, but I didn't get the right one. Also, I thought the Meteor Beam might miss too, so I might get super lucky. Unfortunately, Snorlax is going to get destroyed, and it's going to be going down now. I could have attacked, but there's no way I was going to you know, be able to take a Lunatone out, right? Not with a Cosmic Power Up. Now, I had a very good strategy. I finally get to show you people the Executor strategy. Uh, just taking out with the Berry, right? But before I did that, I had to make a very risky play here. So here comes the stored power, Lunatone with Meteor Beam. It didn't have um, power herb, by the way. I don't think it actually activated that. I'm going to go for the trick here. Now, I gave that a choice, Specs. It's going to be locked into using one move now, which is stored power. On the surface, you might think this is a crazy fight. Like, people in the chat were just roasting me left, right, and center. But I thought, you got to understand the play, right? So swapping into Executor... And the, the, the trap had been set, people. So here comes the stored power. It's going to do nothing to Executor, right? It's going to be able to resist that easy any day of the week. Now, my berry's going to activate right now and do damage to uh, Lunatome. So that's a Roat Berry, right? Every If you're holding a Roat Berry, right, and someone attacks you with a special attack, they take damage. Now, with Harvest, I can continue to harvest that Roat Berry over and over and over again, right? Plus, I've got Infestation to lock the opponent so they can't swap out. So they got to keep attacking you because they've got the choice specs and Infestation has locked them in and I've got the Berry doing damage over and over again. Plus, I've got Infestation doing its own damage. So it's a pretty fun Galaxy Brain set. I actually am really trying to go for an Undercover Pip Knight Sweep as well, just taking the opponent out with a single Berry. Like, I've been trying to do that for a, like a very, very long time. Usually, the things that go wrong are the 20 minute timer or the opponent just has like other like varied moves that you know it, it's very hard to come across someone that only has like physical moves or special moves right but it, ha it has got i have got very close one time anyway so lunatone is going to go down to the row up berry infestation combination on the executor now uh, the last spike on it is the persian i swapped the executor uh, in to the trevenant because i thought i think they're just going to go for chip damage on the fake out and that'll be a nice swapping run. I don't know if they've got a, like a, a move tick ghost yet. So here we go. So I see that normal gem fake out is going to miss for and will fail for the second time there. And I'm going to get a free turn of leftovers recovery, which is very, very good there. Now what I can do right is I can go for focus miss. Focus miss misses. That 
was a heartbreaking miss right there. Now, Perch and Wright can go for U-Turn and can go into the next Pokemon, right? Now, the next Pokemon is Sinking. So, like, okay, that's not all that bad. I've got Leaf Storm on this set. That'll do a good amount of damage. Should, that should almost be able to take it out. Yep. So, now we're going to go for the Leaf Storm here. Sinking Wright is going to have a Focus Sash. It's like, of course it's got a Focus Sash. And I was wondering what sort of move it would do, right? And obviously, I'm going to have a special attack drop there, right? So, they're going to go for a Mega Horn. Now, I made a very, very risky play. I was like, okay, I cannot... I can't take the Persian out, right? I need Trevenant to take the Persian out. So, what I'm going to do, right? I'll swap Trevenant out. I'll go into Executor. Hopefully, they go for just... Hopefully, they miss with Mega Horn. I know it's risky, but i got to do it. And Mega Horn is going to connect on the Executor. That sucks. That was my only way to try and preserve the Trevenant at this stage. So bye-bye, Executor. Bye-bye. And unfortunately, the Trick Room is going to wear off too. I was like, man, I had to make a really risky play there and it didn't pay off, which was a shame. Now, Mega Horn misses this. Sounds like, oh, great. This is good. This is very good. Now, I'm going to go for the uh, Shadow Ball here. We've got two minutes left for the Battle Light. Battles today were really, really long. Um, exactly like something else. Now, the last Pokemon here is Persian, right? I've got some extra additional health from the Leftovers. Persian can't clap me with Fake Out. Does it have a move to hit Ghost-type Pokemon? I know that it can have Bite and that sort of stuff, right? And it's going to come in and it's going to steal my victory away with Safe and take me out. There you go, people. Hope you enjoyed all three battles. I didn't get salty in any of them. I'll see you tomorrow for another theme team. Peace out, everyone. Forget about that Wooloo, all right?